Hello friends, welcome back to our channel. My name is Marcio. Today, I'm bringing a very interesting video for you guys about the 10x developer or 10x engineer. I was looking on the internet for new topics so I could bring a new video for you guys and I came across this 10x developer topic, which I found to be really interesting and I would like to give you guys my take on that. I found many pages talking about the term and trying to define the 10x developer and I found at least a couple of them which I like the most where they have I would say a more complete definition about the term and also there is another page where there is a guy who is an investor he is also explaining about the 10x engineer I'll be reading all of that information for you guys and I'll be giving you my take on that as well in the end I'll be giving you guys my summary about the 10x engineer and let's discover if they are mythical creatures or if they are common and if they live among us let's do it right now so the first page here we have the, the definition Definition, I found this one to be the most complete definition the 10x developer defined. They say that a 10x developer, aka 10x programmer or 10x engineer, is a professional who is 10 times more productive than other developers with an equal level of expertise in the field. So the idea here is if you have five people and amongst these five people, one of them is the 10x engineer, this person can output 10 times more than his peers. And also counting they have the same expertise level uh, on the same field. Let's say they are all back-end engineers or front-end engineers, for example. And they continue saying, that is to say a 10x developer completes 10 times more tasks and writes 10 times better code than any other competent member of their team working in the same conditions. And this is basically the complete definition about the 10x developer, which I think it is a little bit strange uh, to have this definition, just saying that someone who is 10 times more productive than everybody else working in the same conditions, having the same level of expertise and probably experience as well or years of experience. I would like to say right off the bat, this is not how things usually work. Even if you have a team of people, if the company gives them the same working conditions, there will be difference between them because of the their own experience, their career path and well many other factors including external factors from the team as well such as their personal lives another point here is that they ask 10x developers myth or reality and they continue saying personal productivity always depends on context i completely agree 200 percent with this statement as i said before it all depends on the context that those people are working in uh, it is impossible simply to pick up a random 10, 10 people put them to work together, they have never seen each other and expect them to have a brilliant output or even an average output that, that would be nearly impossible. Another good point here is that they say natural talents are the force to be reckoned with. Yes, I also agree with them here, not only talking about the 10x developer here, but I have also worked with great and very talented people. And yes, these people, they could do way more than other people, which is natural. There are people that are more talented than others. There are also people that are more dedicated than others, such as they study more, they work longer hours, and so on and so forth. Yeah, natural talent does exist, but it doesn't mean that natural talent will become a 10x engineer. There is a kind of discrepancy here as well. I really like here their summary where they say, so what does it tell us about the 10x developers? And they continue saying, no matter if you believe in them or not, Super efficient and extra productive developers do exist, of course, and not only developers, but in any area of expertise, there are people that are more productive than others. A portion of their abilities may be attributed to natural talents and inclinations. Yeah, I also agree. However, can any talent really shine without the right approach to work? Definitely not. And it doesn't matter how talented the person is, if the person cannot or are not able to work inside the team to help their peers, if this developer is not able to communicate well, if this person is not able to mentor their peers, or more junior people, if this person is not able to influence other people, it doesn't matter how talented he is, he won't be able to, to succeed working in a project. Maybe working by himself or doing his own stuff, that would be fine, but it is really hard nowadays to have someone who works outside the team in order to produce a product or in order to achieve a common goal. And now let's gonna take a look at this page here because this page, uh, it takes 
a funny approach on the 10x engineer. So uh, they said that the 10x engineer became a meme. And this person here, Shekhar Kirani, I'm sorry if I'm spelling his name wrongly. He seems to be an, an investor and he wrote a few tweets about the 10x engineers. I would like also to comment his idea of the 10x engineers. So he started saying 10x engineers, founders, if you ever come across this rare breed of engineers, grab them. If you have a 10x engineer as part of your first few engineers, you increase the odds of your startup success significantly. Okay, here's a tough question. How do you spot a 10x engineer? Good question. Let's go back here to the definition. A 10x engineer is a professional who is 10 times more productive than other developers with an equal level of expertise in the field. That would be really, really hard and I would say almost impossible on a hiring process point of view to detect if a person is 10 times more productive than someone else. I would say unless you know the person, unless you have worked with that person, as I can say for myself, I have worked with lots of great engineers. I can tell you that uh, I would hire those guys in any time because I trust them. I know how they work and I know their mindset. I know they are good team players and I know they would succeed in any place I put them. But without knowing the person, without knowing the history, without knowing what the person is capable of, that is nearly impossible to know that um, during the hiring process. There are good indicators though. Um, you can take a look at his resume. You can chat with his past teammates or previous bosses and see if that professional aligns to what you are looking for. He keeps explaining about what is his idea of 10x engineers. Here he says, 10x engineers hate, hate meetings. They think it's a waste of time and obvious things are being discussed. They attend the meetings because the manager has called for a staff meeting to discuss the features and status. I partially agree with him, but that's not only for 10x engineers. I believe everybody hates meetings. And many meetings, they could be solved by simply sending an email or sending a Slack message. Nevertheless, I'm not saying that all meetings are useless. There are meetings that are completely important, especially whenever we need to define something new. We need to give the same view for the whole team or for the whole teams that we'll be working um, together. So meetings are important, but the majority of them, they could be avoided for sure. He continues saying, time in the office for 10x engineers is highly irregular. They tend to work when very few folks are around. If there is a crowd or all hands meeting, they are not visible. Most of them are late night coders and come late to the office. I disagree with his this statement here because there is no way a person working inside the team or working in a team environment or even working in any kind of corporation would be able to simply vanish and work on those obscure hours such as 1 a.m. Um, of course, there is a flexibility on the working times. People usually come late, go back home late as well, or arrive earlier and leave earlier as well. But usually there is a piece of time where people should be working together. Number three, 10X engineers laptop screen background is typically black. They always change defaults. Their keyboard keys such as I, F and X are usually worn out than A, S and E email senders. It, this one doesn't make any sense to me. <laughs> Number four, 10x engineers know every line of code that has gone into production. If a QA or support folks alert an issue, they know precisely where the fault or bug is and can fix them and can fix the same in hours versus days. I totally disagree uh, with his statement here. Uh, I've never seen anyone doing that. A person who can remember exactly every single line of code and someone just tell that person, oh, there is a bug and this person can simply imagine those lines of code and can mentally fix them and just go to the code and fix that code. That's not how things happen in reality. Usually doing large projects or working with multiple APIs, multiple services, it's quite hard to remember everything that we have wrote and also remember every single line of code we have done code reviews. So it's nearly impossible to retain everything. And that's not only about the 10X developer or a surgeon or whatever. That's the human brain. We can't simply photograph everything we see um, all the time. Probably a few humans can do that, but it's not the norm. And number five, he says, most of 10X engineers are full stack engineers. For them, code is code. 
They don't care whether it's front-end, back-end, API, database, serverless, etc. I rarely seen them doing UI work, which is a contradiction here because he said that most of 10x engineers are full-stack engineers. They don't care about where the code is because code is code. They don't care if it's front-end, back-end, API, but they rarely see them doing UI work. I don't know. It doesn't, it doesn't make any sense here. The 10x engineers rarely look at help documentation of classes or methods. They know it in memory and they can recall from memory. They write code at the same ease as writing English. No breaks, no pause, pause, I guess. Just type. I don't know. He's, he's depicting here this 10x engineer like a robot, which I completely disagree with his point of view here. The 10x engineers are always learning new frameworks, languages ahead of everyone in the company. They are not afraid of anything new. If there is something new, they gobble up, set up, experiment before anyone is getting started. One of the traits of any engineer is to continuously learn. And that's not only for special engineers or more gifted people. As engineers, we should always be winning and we should always be seeking for new knowledge or the ways to improve ourselves. I would say that all, all engineers, they should always be learning here. The next engineers are poor mentors as they can't teach others on what to do or parcel the work. They always think it's it takes too long to teach or discuss with others. I would rather do it myself. They're also poor interviewers. This kind of people he is depicting here, I would say that this person, no offense to him, uh, I'm just analyzing and giving my opinion on his ideas. This person would be a horrible teammate because this person cannot communicate. He cannot share his ideas. He cannot explain what he does and how he does. And this person cannot mentor junior people and this person cannot interview anyone because he's not able to, to go through that thought process. Uh, I would not like to work with this person at all. 10x engineers don't hack things. They write quality code and know exactly how the code has to evolve and have the mental model of overall code structure. They write at most one design document and the rest is in the code. I'll partially agree with him. And this is not only for 10x engineers. I believe good engineers, they are never willing to hack things and good engineers are never willing to take shortcuts. We always try as best as possible to do the right thing and to write the right code. It's part of the mental model for overall code structure. Yes, that's true. As engineers, we need to have that mental model on how to model our code base, how to have the code structure and how to set up our projects. So that's that's true. About the design document, I disagree because it largely depends on the code and the thing we're trying to achieve. Sometimes we write only one design document, sometimes many design documents. Um, some other times we also need to write some support documents for the project. One thing here that's important to note is that the code must express what the programmer is trying to achieve. For example, the code must be clear. And for example, if I have a method to calculate quotes, the method should be called calculate quotes and not ABC banana. That wouldn't make any sense if anyone wrote that kind of method name. 10x engineers rarely job hunter move out of the company. They move out because you make their life miserable with process, meetings, trainings, and other non-value added activities. If you come across them, hold on them, celebrate them. This is not only for 10x or gifted people, that's for anyone. If the company doesn't give the programmer challenges, if it's boring, if the person is only working on, on BAU, fixing bugs, of course, the person will leave. There is nothing there to learn. There is no advancement for their careers there. And it's not only for gifted people. And now uh, I'm gonna give you guys my summary about this whole 10x engineer. As per definition, there are this kind of people. Yes, of course, there will always be people that are more productive than others, but it largely depends on the context and depends also on what the person is working. Depends if the person has seen that problem before or if the person is well comfortable with that programming language, that environment, the code structure, uh, and so on and so forth. There are so many layers and so many things that may contribute to the programmer's productivity and also things that contribute to make the programmer's lives harder and make them not to produce 
as much as they would like to. And this idea to simply having someone who can magically do these things mentally, and this sounds to me like a robot. I do believe this is a myth, as this is not how the human brain works. Again, there might be some people out there in the world that they can do that, but these are very, very special people. And of course, not all of them are, are programmers either. So these people, they might be programmers, surgeons, firefighters, police officers, and, and they could be working on any other kind of profession. My thing here for you guys is simply forget about this 10x definition here. What you have to do is just keep uh, refining your skills, just keep sharp, keep studying, keep looking for new knowledge, keep making yourself better as a developer, as a programmer. You have to work on your communication skills, you have to work on your interpersonal skills, your negotiation skills, and your skills to also influence people. Because outside the technical space, these are very and extremely valuable skills to have. A person who can talk, a person who can share his ideas, a person who can communicate well to others and drive people to achieve a common goal, these are invaluable skills to have. And any team will need a person like that. Okay, I hope you guys have enjoyed my video. Please do not forget to click on the like button, also subscribe to my channel, and also click on the notification bell so you won't miss any of my videos. I'll see you guys next time.